watching us live this morning. I know we got people in various states here uh, that's online as well watching the service this morning. So we welcome you. Let's welcome, let's give a big shout out uh, to all of you. Thank you for coming to
welcome to the service this morning. I pray that all of you, all of you out here and all of you out there are having a wonderful, wonderful weekend, a wonderful day. Can y'all hear me back there in the back? Can you hear me okay? Amen. I hope and pray that all of you hear me well out there online today. Anyway, I want to get uh, uh, right quickly into the Word, but before we do that, I uh, just want to have just a few announcements uh, this morning. And let me get my announcement page right here. Uh, Pastor, I have to write down some things because I might miss some things. So I wrote them down, believe it or not. And uh, we have, we announced last week that we're going to be giving away a prize uh, for the best and most outstanding face mask at both services, the 9 a.m., and also the 11 o'clock service this morning. So do we have any entries uh, for the 11 o'clock service? Bonnie, I don't see anybody. Well, I can win. No, you can't. You and I can't win. Okay. <laughs> so maybe we'll try that again uh, next Sunday. We had some really good ones this, this morning in Sister Sarah Moon. It was hilarious. She had a, if you wasn't here... Uh, she had a face mask made and had these big old red lips that just stuck out. It was amazing. It was really pretty cool. And Sister Sherry posted a picture on Facebook if you want to see that. Um, also today, how many knows what tomorrow is? Memorial Day. Memorial Day. And how many knows uh, in here and out there watching live is why do we celebrate Memorial Day? In memory of, believe it or not, approaching now is about one and a half million Americans since the Revolutionary War that has given their life, either spilled blood on this soil or on foreign soil, uh, to fighting for the freedoms that you and I enjoy here in the United States of America. Amen? So we celebrate those lives today. And as a part of our celebration, uh, if, you, do you, if you have a loved one or a relative or a close friend, uh, and, and if you served in the armed forces and you have someone that gave their life in the armed forces by serving uh, in the U.S., either here or on foreign ground, would you please stand today and we want to honor we want to stand in proxy for those people today and honor those that have given their lives. Anyone else or anyone have a family member that has given their lives, would you please stand? Amen. Now, would you all stand with me today in honor of all of those wonderful, uh, brave, courageous soldiers, men and women, that have given their lives. And let's pray right now for their families. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come to you today. God, to, uh, to honor and to celebrate the many men and women that have given their lives. And Lord, we respect them, we honor them, and we pray for their families today, God. As in memory of them, God, we so honor them and we honor their families today. We pray that you would continue to bless those families. God, with your presence, uh, with your peace, uh, and your comfort to their lives. In Jesus' name, and we all agree by saying, Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. God bless you today. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I want to uh, go over something just a little bit uh, before we get started in the message this morning. Uh, I want to say something about the face mask. Uh, if you choose to wear a face mask or you choose not to wear a face mask, it doesn't have anything to do with your faith. This is something that we're doing as a precaution, just like I do things in my life uh, by practicing preventative health care by taking care of myself. And like I shared with the previous service, your pastor, I take maybe 10 or 12 uh, supplements, vitamins, uh, per se, a day, almost every day, uh, for prevention, preventative health care. And I take a, an amazing product that builds my immune system, uh, and I've been doing that since the 90s, 
And, and, and I'm going to tell you, it, it just, it, it, it works. And I'm practicing preventative health care. Therefore, I've been blessed, and uh, I, I'm here to say 67 years old, I don't have to take any medications, and I praise God for that. And I'm, I'm, as the old saying goes around here, and we hear in Winston County a lot, I'm as healthy as a horse, and I give Jesus Christ all that praise for that. So there's no difference, my point I'm trying to make, there's no difference in trying to practice prevention by wearing one of these. It's not a measure of your faith, nor a measure of your lack of faith. So I want you to know that, I want you to feel free to wear a mask, because really what it's saying, if you choose to or choose not to, it's not a measure of your faith or a detriment of your faith, but it's one way of saying, I care about you. And it doesn't mean if you don't wear one that you don't care about people either. And please don't look at others that don't choose to wear a face mask that they don't care or that their faith is something wrong, you know, with them or their faith. But I think it's a, a really good preventative health care measure. Uh, I want to say something about this. Uh, this morning when we got here, I shared this with the prior service of the people that were here, is that when we got here this morning, uh, you know, I, I put several American flags out front about a week or two ago uh, to celebrate um, this day. Or, or tomorrow, rather, for Memorial's Day. And this morning when the deacons and I arrived here at the church, several of them, I can't remember how many, but almost at least half or more of them were stomped, broken, and taken down. And I'm holding these and the remainder in my hand. And the reason I'm doing this is right here within our city of Haleyville, Alabama, and in this wonderful country, and during this time that we're celebrating the lives that spill blood, especially on foreign ground, there's still people that do not respect and honor this flag that stands for the Christian nation. Now, we, don't, we pledge allegiance to the flag of America as one nation under God. And... It's not that we pledge allegiance just to the flag like we pledge our allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ, but we honor and respect that flag because of what it stands for in the many people's lives that have given their lives so that you and I and all of you out there watching this morning enjoy the liberties and the freedoms that we have to worship the only true and living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the reason I wanted to show this this morning is to not say that we have a, a bad city or a bad church or something uh, that's missing here other than this, is that there are over 17,000 people out here in our county alone that may not know the Lord Jesus Christ or have lost their way. And this, my friend, is another reason that we need to be the witnesses that Jesus has called us to be because there's a lot of people out here that need Jesus Christ. I don't believe that people would destroy the American flag if the love of God was living in their hearts. And I'm not here to judge anybody that's done anything like this, but I can't see how the love of God would be in someone that doesn't love the freedoms that soldiers men and women alike, have died for and spilled their blood. So let's be in prayer for these people. We love these people that do this. We just want to see them have a wonderful, changed life that only Jesus Christ and His blood can set them free. Do you agree with that? Give God Amen. some praise. In the house. Amen. 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 Well, I want to get right into the Word of God this morning. And uh, good to see you're not visitors here. Absolutely good to see you guys here all the way from Georgia. God bless y'all. And we're always happy to see y'all when y'all come home to see mom and daddy. You're always welcome here. This is your roots here. Amen. So welcome. Welcome to all of you out here. And I hope you got your ears on this morning. Want to hear what God has to say this morning. Well, I, I can't wait to share it with you. Bonnie, did I miss anything? I don't think so. 
I have to check in with the wife every now and then. And I want you to get your ears on out there that's watching today. And I want to say a big high five to my brother. He's still serving in the armed forces. I love you, my brother. And I'm glad you're watching this morning. And uh, some friends down in Hamilton, Alabama, I want to give you a big shout out down there. Chris Hamrick, God bless you, brother. Going to have you here pretty soon uh, at the church to share your testimony and also to sing some of those amazing songs that you've recorded. And um, our friends up in Delaware, hey, guys, good, good, to, good to see you today as well. Well, I want to preach today. I want to preach and I want to preach teach today. You okay with that? Yeah. Amen. So uh, the title of the sermon today is Whole Fast Soldier. Hold fast, soldier. See, tomorrow we do celebrate Memorial Day in this country. And it's honoring those many women and men that have spilled their blood. Uh, so that we enjoy the freedoms that we have here in the United States of America. And as I was researching this from the Revolutionary War, I understand that there's somewhere approaching now about one and a half million people that have sacrificed their lives. These people are heroes, absolutely heroes in my book. They never gave up. They never, even in the moments of weakness in their life, even the moments of discouragement in their life, they never gave up. They just keep going forward. They keep pushing forward. They, they did never quit, and quitting was never in their vocabulary. It was never an option because they understood their purpose. Would you say that with me? Purpose? purpose. They understood their orders. Would you say that with me? Orders. orders. And they understood their oath of en enlistment. Oath of enlistment. Now, I was uh, in, uh, uh, I, I was uh, wanting to understand more about this. So I researched this because I have never been in the military before. Uh, and so I wanted to know what kind of oath do they actually take, our men and women in armed forces. And here is a current oath that our men and women have always taken. And the oath of enlistment reads this way. I, John Doe or Jane Doe, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of officers appointed over me according to the regulations and the uniform code of justice, military justice, so help me God. Amen. You know, uh, this is a confession of allegiance, a confession of service, labor, obedience, a stance of courage and willingness to fight for the freedom of others. Is this not what you and I, as believer followers of Jesus, are called to do? Amen? You see, we have not, we have, we have really not in reality given, have we not, just really in reality, given our allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ, to defend, to witness, to serve, and to help rescue others from the kingdom of darkness. Is that not our allegiance, really, as Christians? However, many in God's army have gone A-W-O-L. And if you don't know what that means, I had to look it up myself. It means to be absent without official leave. We have a lot of people within the kingdom of God today, within uh, the churches in America now and in this region now that are A-W-O-L. They are absent without official leave or without permission. In other words, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm right on here that most pastors in this region will agree with me. There's been so many people come in and out the doors that gave their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, that confessed the prayer of salvation and repented of their sins, and that we have never seen them again or saw them just for a short time. In other words, they may have wanted to try Jesus, but they really didn't, didn't make Jesus Lord of their lives, and they just said a prayer. They said a prayer without allegiance. They said a prayer without commitment. They really didn't understand what it was to really truly make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. And where are they today? They are A-W-O-L. But I got good news for you. God has called you and I that are the faithful soldiers that he has called to 
Go out and seek and rescue and restore those that maybe have lost their way. Can somebody say amen with me? Amen. You see, they left their post without permission. And I pray that you never leave your post without permission. They either don't like, they either don't like the orders that came from headquarters, or they have fell back into civilianhood of their flesh. See, other times though, however, some people just grow weary in their faith. Uh, I've, I've done that before. Uh, some people have been discouraged and ready to give up. And I've been in those shoes before. Am I talking to anybody out there this morning? You see, but what do you do when you grow weary? What do you do when you get discouraged sometimes? Uh, and and you're, you feel like you're ready to give up and you want to throw in the towel and you say, well, I've tried Jesus and it just hadn't worked. He just hasn't worked out for me. Listen, my friend, living by faith, following Jesus Christ and making him commander in chief of your life he always worked i'm going to tell you something it's never god's fault it's never god's fault he is always with you he never leaves you and he never will forsake you but guess what if we're looking for someone to blame we need to look back into ourselves not to live condemned not to live with regret and condemnation but to say lord what is it that you truly want me to do? What is it in me that needs to come out of me so that I serve you better and live the overcoming life? It is God's will for you and I to live the overcoming life. Remember this in John 10, 10, the devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and live it to the full. That means may have life if you choose that life by choosing your faith and following God and putting yourself all in to the commander in chief of your life. Amen? Amen? Well, maybe some of you that are listening out there this morning, maybe some of you here this morning, you feel like, well, I've waited so long for my breakthrough. It just haven't happened yet. I've waited for my dreams to come true. I, I, I thought God wanted my dreams to come true. Well, He does. He does. He absolutely does. Maybe you've been waiting on, a, on your health and your healing. Maybe your ministry calling. How about your marriage and your marriage is not getting better? How about your finances? You're wanting them to improve. And how about your children maybe that are not saved? And, 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 and you're wondering, God, where are you in this? And what has happened? Well, let me tell you this. God has never failed you yet, and He will never fail you. He is right there, and He is going to do exactly what He has promised for you. Amen? It seems, see, to you that are feeling this way, that God hasn't done anything yet. And sometimes when you feel that way, you'll go A-W-L on the Lord. You see, if you're having thoughts like this, and some of you are, I've had thoughts like this. I'll have to raise both of my hands this morning. I've had plenty of thoughts like this. But you know what you can do? You can stop it. You can absolutely stop it with the word of your faith. But you've got to speak that word of faith out of your mouth. And sometimes you just got to get in the face of the devil and get in your head and say, Shut up, devil. In the name of Jesus, I command you to shut your lying mouth in Jesus' name. You see, the devil will always lie to you. He will always say the opposite of what God is speaking to you. You see, all God's promises are yes and amen. amen. Yes and amen. That means a resounding yes and amen. That means God says you can count on it. You can absolutely count on it. But I'm going to tell you something. You cannot live any old way that you want to. You cannot live A-W-L uh, on God. You cannot be absent from His presence and expect God's blessings upon your life. It doesn't work that way, my friend. It works by staying under the covering, under the orders, following our chief and commander's commands, and living free in Christ Jesus. And, and therefore, you've got to live by the word of faith. And if you're going to live by the word of faith, you're going to believe the word of faith. You're going to get in the word of faith. And you're going to speak the word of faith into whatever mountain that is or whatever obstacle that is that's facing you today. Amen? Amen. You see, the Lord in Joshua 1 and 9 he says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. 
as a soldier of God, in which you are, if you're born of the Spirit of God, you are to be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid because God's not given you and I a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. For the Lord your God is with you. He actually says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. God's word is sure. His promises are sure. And, that, and God never lies. And in Deuteronomy 31 and 8, he also affirms this by saying, I will never fail you. I will never, ever abandon you. He is your father. He is Father God. He loves you. He's the God of love. He's the God of all promises that are yes and amen. And then Jesus, Jesus as the Son of God and the living God here, the image of God that walked the face of the earth and now ascended to the right hand of the Father. Before He left, He looked at His disciples and His disciples, you and I, and if any of you are having any doubts out there, Jesus Christ is God. The only way that we could know Him is that God was birthed by a virgin. The Spirit of God came upon Mary and was birthed in that baby. And He was born just like you and I so that He could suffer the same things that you and I feel and suffer in this life. And He was the sinless, spotless Lamb of God that was given at Mount uh, Calvary, got off this hill and crucified for you and I, spilled his blood for you and I so that we could be redeemed and restored in right relationship with God Almighty and we can become just like Jesus as his image here on this earth. You believe that? Say amen. amen. And, and Jesus, and in Jesus Christ alone is their salvation, is their redemption, is their promises. Yes and yes and yes. Amen. But listen to what Jesus Jesus said in Mark 11, 22 through 25, he says to his disciples, that means you and I have faith in God. Amen. You have faith in God. You can put your faith and trust solely in God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'll tell you the truth. If you're feeling like in the, the mother grubs, if you're feeling down and depressed and alone and Feel like God is not coming through with you. Encourage yourself with the word of faith this morning. Jesus said, I want you to say and speak to the mountain. The mountain is whatever obstacle that you are facing right now. Whether it be a, a sickness, whether it be a, a financial problem, whether it be a children problem, whether it be a marriage problem, whether it be a decision you're trying to make right now about where you to live and there's been struggling and things happen to that, whether it's in a home you're trying to buy, Jesus is saying, I want you to begin to speak to this problem, speak to this mountain right now, and then it, it may be lifted up and cast into the sea. God's word here is telling you and I to take that problem and open up your mouth and speak the word of God to it and say, be cast into the sea. And that sea there is reminiscent of an Old Testament top and shadow of that sea, that washing of uh, labor there where the priests would wash their, uh, their hands and their belongings there before they went into the inner court there uh, of the tabernacle of Moses. That image back into their face there, uh, the image of who they truly are. And that speaks of the Word of God. So Jesus is actually saying here, I want you to throw the problem into the sea of my promises. That's my word right here. There's over 7,000 promises in the word of God and God is saying, speak it, take it, throw it into the, my word and speak that word over it, in it and through it and watch me bring it forth. Give him some praise in the house today. But Jesus says when you do that, you must really believe it will gonna, it's going to happen. And do not doubt in your heart. See, you may doubt other things, but God never wants you to doubt Him because He'll always come through. He's the God of the breakthrough, and He'll always come through for you. All of His promises are yes and amen. And then Jesus goes on to say, you can pray about and for anything. That's what He said. And if you believe that you receive it, it'll be yours. But that's according to this wheel right here. Yeah. That's according to what God's word has promised. But listen to what he says. But when you were praying, first forgive anyone you were holding a grudge against. Now here's a qualification. 
to receive what you're praying for. Jesus is saying, before you pray like this, I want you to first forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Because you know what? The Lord is saying today, you never have to be afraid because fear has no place in you. If you become discouraged, please know that God is with you and in you and will perform what He has promised for you. It's not time to quit, soldiers of God. It's time to encourage yourself in the Lord and be bold and courageous in the Lord. Put your faith in God Almighty and in His Word. If you've got faith, it is time to speak faith by speaking to the problem and using the Word of God. Speak to the promise of the Word of what you need. Believe you got it before you receive it and thank God for it before it comes and you're going to see it. Amen. You see, your dreams, your plans and purposes and prayers can be hindered if you are holding a grudge, Jesus is saying, or unforgiveness against anyone. Even grumbling and complaining will prevent God's plan and purpose in your life. This might be the reason for your discouragement, your reason of oppression and depression and feelings of giving up or giving in or throwing in the towel. If you're feeling this way, though, my brothers and sisters, or all of you out there watching this morning, i got good news for you. Good news for you. And where do you go to get good news from the Word of God? In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23, it says, Let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Say that with me. Without wavering. Say it again. Without wavering. For he is faithful. That promise. He is faithful. Jesus Christ, the faithful one. But I want to go on and read a little bit more in Hebrews chapter 10. Now, and the reason I want to read this is when God's calling you as a soldier to hold fast your profession of faith, without wavering, He is also not only encouraging you to do this, He also instructs us in the next few verses on how you proceed with this. Here's what the Lord's Word says to do in Hebrews 10, 24. So how are you going to hold on without wavering and knowing that Jesus is faithful and will do it? Well, that's through your relationship and your identity. But listen to what it has to do with your works as a soldier. Not works to be saved because works coming from you because you are born of the Spirit of God. In verse 24 of Hebrews 10 it says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. These are these are something that you do and do uh, and looking to do led of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. If you're going to live without wavering and knowing that God is faithful. And guess what? When you do this, you're going to see an increased level of the joy of the Lord in your life. And listen to verse 25. And let us not neglect our meeting together. Meeting together is something else that you do as followers of Jesus. As, and don't do, he says, as some people do that are not meeting together, but encourage one another. Another work of the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts and the fruit that are in your life. Encourage one another, especially now that the day of His return is drawing near, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. And verse 36, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. So what is the apostle saying here in Hebrews chapter 10? If you want to live with the kind of faith without wavering, and that's God's will for your life, you got to know that God is faithful to His Word. And you are not called to waver in your faith. You have got to begin to look for opportunities to motivate one another and the acts of love and good works. 
meeting together, encouraging other people, being confident and trusting God with your life, and to make up your mind, to make up your mind, and make up your mind, is I am holding on, and I will patiently endure to the end. Amen? So I pray today that you hear what God Almighty is trying to say with us today within His Word. This is actually what Jesus expects you and I to do, especially during trying times like we're living in right now. See, during times that may inconvenience you, during times that governing authorities are trying to help save lives and prevent the spread of a virus that we've never heard of before. Jesus said there would be times just like we are living right now before he returned. He didn't say to voice your complaints, nor to grumble about what's going on right now. He said to show others his love, to witness the gospel, and be his image. Show his love, witness the gospel, and be his image. There is no room for the lack of faith or grumbling and complaining, especially on all the social media that we have. You see, I believe with all my heart that healthy guidelines and precautions are good for all people. I do not believe at all that there is a conspiracy coming from our President Donald Trump nor the great governor of our state of the Alabama. I believe with all my heart they are serving the Lord and trying to help save lives. Actually, we're commanded by God's Word to be subject to the governing authorities for the supreme authority God has appointed them for what? Our good, not our demise. And if you want to take notes on that, look it up later. You'll find that in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. Now, I know that submit and submissive has not become a popular word in America. Nobody wants you to tell them what to do anymore. I don't have to listen to that. I'm a person of my own. I beg to differ with you. If you're a born-again Christian, whether you're here in this church today or whether you're out there watching this morning, if you're born again, you are blood-bought by the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for you and paid for your past and paid for your future. The Bible says you don't belong to yourself anymore. To make Jesus Lord of your life, you've given up your life to serve Him so that you can live the abundant, overcoming life. So make Jesus your Lord of your life if you haven't. But submissive is a good word. It's absolutely a good word. But you know what? A spirit of rebellion will not. And that is also a spirit of witchcraft. It's also called a Jezebel spirit. But an unsubmissive spirit is not good. You cannot expect to be blessed and living an unsubmissive spirit. You know, actually the Bible calls us to not only submit to governing authorities in our land, but it also calls you and I to submit to the, to the kingdom government of leadership within the church that you're a part of. But it also calls me and you and I on equal ground to submit to one another in love. Submit to one another in love. There's something great about that that God wants to do in our lives. So the word submissive is the Greek word hupostasio. And it means to be subordinate, to obey, be under obedience, to submit self unto. The only exception to this rule in our land today is when a government or human institution ceases to function under or abandons its proper function and operating accordingly to God's purposes and or requires your eye to do something that is contrary to the Word of God. That's the only reason that we are not to be under subjection to our governing authorities. God has actually instituted those governing authorities to look out for our good. So we as followers of Jesus are to be doing good works, and part of that is being good citizens. Amen. I mean, what's wrong with being a good citizen? A good citizen. And I'm going to tell you something. And again, no judgment or condemnation. 
on the people that did this to the United States flag. But this is not being a good citizen. But God wants them to be a citizen. See, if you're first and foremost a good citizen in the kingdom of God, you will be a wonderful citizen in the place that you live, in the city you live, and in the country that you live. Amen? Amen. You see, Jesus wants us to be good citizens. Jesus has not called us, therefore, to air our angered personal opinions that do not line up with the Word of God over social media or behind His pulpits in His churches about questionable beliefs and choices of what we don't like about someone, somebody, or something. Amen? That never changes anything for good, but brings offense, strife, confusion, disunity, and gives Jesus Christ a bad name before unbelievers. It's time to stop that. You don't have to be a part of that. If somebody asks you your opinion on something that's not good, then give them the truth and give them the love of Jesus. Amen? See, we actually are commanded to live as servants. Servants of our King, the Lord Jesus. And we're actually commanded to honor everyone, to love everyone, to fear God, honor, and pray for those in authority, especially our president. And if you're wanting scripture on that, that you'll find that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. And then something that I'm so respectful and honorable to our president, Donald Trump, uh, just, uh, I think it was two or three days ago, I watched him online, <clears throat> live online. It was May 22nd. Our president actually mandated and made places of faith essential and must open all over America immediately now as of May 22nd, or he would deal with any governor that does not comply. Now, the... Uh, you know, so all so there were some states. Let's give our president a hand. Amen. Amen. You see, there were some governors that wasn't going to uh, 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 comply with opening up churches like we have done here for the last two Sundays. Now that doesn't mean that we're not going to comply with some of the recommendations. We're going to continue through July the third with the social distancing of six feet. That doesn't mean that we have a lack of faith. It means that we love and are concerned about all people. Amen? And you get to choose whether you wear one of these or not. I think that's a good thing. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. But we are going to continue to sanitize the church before and after each service. Amen? But I am so grateful to our president, a man of faith, that will stand up and do the right thing. Amen? You see, we are God's people. We must take great care of how we express and image ourselves all the time, but especially now. And why would I say such a thing? Because we have been given the greatest opportunity that the church has had in many, many years to win a huge harvest for the kingdom of God out here. There are so many people in America and within our region right now, over 17,000 people in Winston County right now that are not in churches today or was not in churches even before this coronavirus thing yet, were not in churches, have lost their way, or may not be born of the Spirit of God. That is our orders from headquarters and our mission is to search out and rescue these people. You see, this won't happen. This great harvest will not happen if we act and react like the rest of the world. And we feel, I don't have to answer to nobody. I'll just put, I don't care what the pastor said. I'm going to put what I want to. I've had a few people tell me that. I don't care what you say. You don't have the right to tell me what to do. I'm not here to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm not here to offend you. But I'm here to tell you this because I love you. And I'm trying to stop division. 
I'm trying to stop this negativity. Of, of, it actually causes people to live in fear. They not they, that nobody has ever been felt better or secured, and it actually don't do anything to help the situation that we're in. If you're going to do anything on public media, put something on there about Jesus and share the gospel of how people can be born again and say, or share your testimony. Tell something good about somebody. Amen. 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 It's not time to quit nor be discouraged. It's time to hold fast, soldier, your professional faith without waiting. For Jesus, who has promised it, is faithful. Waver or wavering, what in the world does that mean? Well, I, I'd like to think that I'm a student of the Bible and I'm always learning something. I don't know everything, but I'm amazed at word studies in the Bible. So I want to give you this one this morning. What in the world does waver mean? Well, waver or wavering, it comes from a Greek word, akalines, A-K-L-I-N-E-S, which means someone that does not bend. And what? We're not talking about being submissive here. We're talking about someone that does not bend in their faith. Someone that is fixed and unmovable, stable, that endures. In other words, God and you have too much invested in you. God and you have too much invested in you to quit. Why in the world would you quit what God started? He promised I will perform it until the end, until you stay before me if you'll trust me. Because you have encountered God is why you don't quit. You've been changed. You're not the same person anymore. Doesn't the Bible say in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, you're a new person now. You're a new creation now that your past is passed away. And now all things have become new. Then why continue to live in your past? It is not God's will for you to live in something that he bought and purchased. It's over. But the devil wants you to always look back there. And try to live back there. That is the devil's lies. But see, you've encountered God. I want, see, God is trying to also encourage you with this word today. That to remind you how many of you have won any battle before. And you know the Lord has helped you. Well, give God a praise if you've won the battle before. Amen. Amen. Everybody in this house. Well, if God did it once, if you've killed your lion and your bear, and it was by the power of God, and whatever you're facing right now that's got you in the mud and grubs, God is saying, if I did it through you again, I'll do it again. God is always the God of again and again and again and another chance and another chance and another chance because God is love. God is power. God is might. But you have got to access that might and power and that promise of God by activating your faith. And if you believe faith, then you won't have a problem speaking to that mountain. Amen? Please remember this. God if he did it once, and every one of you, and every one of you out there, I'm sure that you can relate to this. If he did it once, he's ready and willing and able to do it again. Many give up hope and quit believing and trusting because they get tired of just waiting. Tired of waiting when the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Sometimes we want to get ahead of the Lord. When we haven't really heard or trusted in the Lord. I've done that. How many knows that don't work out too good for you if you get ahead of the Lord? How many's made those kind of mistakes before? But you know what? God never throws you away when you made a mistake. He usually come helps you clean it up and get you right back on the right road again. Amen? Well, you want to quit because you've been waiting. And then the devil comes, and I've had this happen to me so many times, you can't count it. I'm going to tell you a secret. The devil will never stop lying to you. He's, if you're following Jesus, I mean, this is a revelation. If you want a deep truth today in revelation, then you can write this down. The devil will never stop lying to you. He won't. He will never stop lying. And you know what? <clears throat> this is another purpose that will grow you in your faith. It's when you realize who's lying to you and you choose to tell that lying devil the truth. Just like Jesus did in Matthew chapter 4. 
is when the devil came to him and questioned his identity and who he was and what he could do. Did you know Jesus didn't get on Facebook and post his mully groups? He didn't get on Facebook and told what he thought about King Herod. He didn't get on Facebook or Instagram, and you may be thinking, well, they didn't have that. Well, maybe they had smoke signals back then. I don't really know. Or maybe they had Pony or Donkey Express back then. I don't know. But Jesus did not air uh, his mully grubs or whatever that you may call it. No, he didn't because he didn't have any because he knew his identity and he knew his purpose because he knew his father. Can somebody say amen? So what does Jesus do? Jesus speaks the word of faith by giving Satan when Satan was lying to him. He spoke the word and the devil, just like the coward he is, he run like the coward he truly is. Amen? amen. So the devil, has he been whispering to your ear? Thing you believe it for, it just ain't going to happen. Or he might be telling you, if it was going to happen, wouldn't it have already happened by now? Or maybe the devil's saying something like this to you. You're just wasting your time, boy. Look at all them years of your life that you just wasted trying to serve God trying to do right thing and all the people you've tried to help and all that you've given and all that you've done it's all for nothing look at what you got just ain't as much is it as a lot of those people you've been trying to help and you know this is what how the devil lies they really don't deserve it anyway they don't deserve your hard earned work your hard earned money. You see, when the devil tells you this, that you're wasting your time and your many years, it's and he's telling you it's time to move on with your life. You gotta get in that devil's face. You gotta begin to pick up the sword of the spirit and speak to that lying devil. To the problem with believing. The problem, you see, with believing lies like this, the devil, uh, you don't move on if you believe these lies. You will actually go backwards into the old flesh life that you once lived. you got to speak to that devil. you got to get strong in your faith and let that be now because faith is now. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, and you've got to get in the devil's face and say, shut up! devil in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and speak the word of God to him because it ain't God speaking like that God's never going to tell you anything that condemns you that causes you to be depressed that causes you to be oppressed or causes you to feel guilt and shame it's not God it's time to tell the devil get thee behind me Satan you see, if you're listening to the devil's lies, it's time to, James chapter 4 and verse 7, to submit yourselves before God Almighty, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's time to hold fast your profession of faith, soldiers of God, because he who has promised is faithful. Amen? Amen. The Word of God is calling you to hold fast. Hold fast. What does it mean, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked me this morning. It means to capture faith. It's like capturing like an animal in a trap. And I'm not trying to be gory here, but that's the image I want you to see. You're, you've captured an animal. And faith is not an animal. I'm just trying to give you a visual here this morning. It's like capturing an animal in a trap. And you hold it down. And God is saying here, hold fast your faith. Capture it. Hold it down. Don't let it escape you. Have it. Keep it in memory. And go forward with it. Possess it. Retain it. Seize on it. Stay in it. Take it and withhold it. you got to hold on. Hold on to faith. Faith will bring about your miracles, but you've got to hold on to it. You can't be wavering in your faith. Is it one day because you feel like it, that you believe faith, but the next day, if you're in the money grubs, well, I just don't feel like it today. That's not how it works. 
when you get actually in an oppressed state, it's the day that you begin to use faith. The devil does not want you to use faith in a time when you're down because when a time when you're down is exactly the time that God wants you to use faith because when you do it when you're down, you're going to say, wow, it worked. The word worked. The word really works. And the devil's afraid of you. And especially for you, if you find that out, you're going to tell everybody. <laughs> Excuse me. So hold fast to what? The profession of your faith. Profession. What in the world does that mean? Profession is a Greek word, homologia. And it means to acknowledge, your acknowledgement, your confession. In other words, if you say that you have faith, then you're going to speak faith. And if you're going to speak faith of what faith says, then you're going to have to speak the Word of God of what it says into whatever situation that you need. That's how faith works. It's not begging God for what God already wants to do. It is acting like, speaking like, talking like, and doing what God does. That's why you are a new creation on the earth. As priests, sons, and daughters of God, God wants you to speak what He has already said in His Word to whatever situation that you're in. Amen. You see, it's not time to quit. It's time, soldiers of God, to fight the good fight of faith. Dig in your heels, drive in the stake, tell the devil you're not moving in any direction, but forward with Jesus Christ, and it will be the devil that's eating the dust of your feet as you stomp that imp, that coward, and I could call him a lot of other things, but I better keep it clean here. God wants you to stomp the devil. He's already given you all the authority and power over the enemy, the devil, your adversary, the devil. How do you win that fight? How do you get out of the mully grubs when the devil's lying to you and oppressing you and you don't feel like it? Speak the word of faith it's because God will always do what he promised. Amen. And in closing today, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you've given allegiance to him when you surrendered your life and made him your Lord and Savior. That's actually allegiance. You have given allegiance to Him to serve Him, to love Him, to love others, to defend others, to witness to others, to serve Him and serve others, and help rescue others from the kingdom of darkness. As a Christian, this is your purpose. So a lot of people ask me as a pastor, Pastor, what is my purpose? I just told you. Love, defend, witness, serve, help rescue others from the kingdom of darkness. That is your purpose. You can't go AWL on Jesus. You're in His army to search and rescue. Your heart's drive must once again today be, I will never, ever leave a fallen person behind to fall into the hands of the enemy. No one left behind. Can you say that with me? No one left behind. I didn't hear you. No one left behind. That is God's will for finding your life as soldiers of God. And the Word of God says in Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary while doing good. You're doing good if you live in my faith and speak in faith. For in due season, you're going to reap a harvest if you don't lose heart and quit. Therefore, as you have opportunity, God's Word says, let us do good to all people. Do good. You're, you're to be do-gooders. So who are you? You're a do-gooder. Okay? I mean, people out here in our community need to point their finger and say, hey, our goes, I can't remember his name, but he's a do-gooder. He's one of them do-gooders because he's imaging Jesus Christ. So do good to all people and especially to those of the household of faith. You know, sometimes you can get discouraged, even ready to throw in the towel while serving the Lord. That's why Paul is encouraging us to not give up. The Holy Spirit and the Word guarantees you and I that we're going to reap a harvest.
accomplish and win if you don't give up, if you don't quit. You see, the Word of God is also telling you and I as followers of Jesus that others are counting on you. And they are counting on you. Jesus is counting on you and giving you an opportunity to do something good for somebody else. Something that is beneficial. Something that is life-changing. Something that is loving. Something that is caring to all people you meet in this life, especially those of the household of faith. And listen to this. this is the last word today. For we are God's workmanship. In other words, this workmanship means God's masterpiece. Look at somebody today and tell them you look beautiful. You're God's masterpiece. Now quit being ashamed. Look at somebody and say you look beautiful because you're God's masterpiece. You're the image of Jesus. And listen what you were created in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2.10. For good works, good works is, what that means is doing things that benefit other people. And works is a Greek word, ekron, E-R-G-O-N. And it means to make a personal effort, a personal effort. You make effort. You are the one to make the effort, not your pastor. I'm already doing that. And God's calling you to do the same. You make a personal effort. And through your gifting or your occupation of work to do an act of kindness, a good deed that benefits another person. And that's every day. That's just not one time, but it's every day. Which God prepared beforehand that we should be actively doing these things. You see, Jesus is counting on you. Other people are counting on you. So encourage yourself in the Lord today. Get out of the mud and grubs. Pick up your sword, soldiers of God, and begin to fight the good fight of faith again. God is going to make it happen. First Thessalonians 5, 24, because He who had called you to salvation is faithful. He will do it through you, but you've got to have faith. You see, those good works are service. Service from you. It comes from your identity and relationship. From the one that spiritually birthed you, the Lord Jesus Christ. And how your good works will flow and show through you determines two things about your life. If you're truly in an intimate relationship with Jesus. And number two, if you truly believe who God says that you are, that's your identity. Relationship and identity, good works will flow out of that. You've got a good relationship with God and you know who you are in Jesus Christ, good works will flow from you. Not to be saved, but because you are born of the Spirit of God. Just as those that have served in the armed forces, God has commissioned you as a soldier in His army. Your mission, again, is to search and rescue. Search and rescue. And our Commander-in-Chief, the Lord God, he calls you, see, an overcomer. Not just for yourself, but for you to help others overcome. He calls you more than a conqueror. Not just for yourself, but for you to help other people conquer whatever else is holding them prisoner. God calls you His sons and daughters for you to mentor spiritual sons and daughters. Because the truth is, if you're born of the Spirit of God, you've truly been forgiven. You have been redeemed. You've been justified just as though you have never sinned. You have made holy. You are blameless and made free by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Commander-in-Chief. He has given you nine spiritual gifts. He has given you nine fruit. And He has given you the armor to wear and to clothe yourself with every day. No one left behind. So soldiers out there, Soldiers out there that's watching, watching today, live, hold fast, hold fast to your profession of faith without never wavering. For God is faithful. He has promised you. And whatever God has promised you in this word, He will do it. You can count on it, my friend. You can stand to your feet right now. And we want to pray here today. We're going to pray 
out there for you today this way. If you have fallen, you can get back up in Jesus. He's never left you and never will forsake you. He loves you. Jesus Christ loved you so much. He went to Calvary's cross and gave his life blood so that you could be redeemed and restored back into right relationship with God. So if you're here or if you're watching online today, this is my prayer for you right now, that you receive Jesus Christ from your heart, that you would confess your sins to Jesus Christ. And a sinner's prayer you will find in the book of Luke chapter 18. When the publican smote on his breast and he said, God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And then, also, when you say that, you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you. And ask Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior today. And my friend, if you mean that with all your heart, God will miraculously rebirth you. You'll be born again. And your name will be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. You become new, a new creation in God. All of your past will be washed away with the precious blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've done that today, I pray right now that you do that right now. As you're standing here at this church service today, and you're out there watching today, I pray that you take a moment right now and pray that prayer today and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And for you others that are watching today or you others that are here, if you need to recommit your life to the Lord or you've been down and oppressed and been in the muddy groves, you can get back up, soldier. You can get back up, soldier. You can have faith today and trust in God without wavering because God is faithful. You've got to pick back up that sword and begin again to fight the good fight of faith and say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I trust in you. I know that your promises are yes and amen. And I pick back up the sword of the word of the truth today and I begin to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name, I bless you today. If you've made that decision here, I want you to go across the hall as we exit today. I want you to go out the double doors here to exit. And then if you need uh, a further instruction or if you need prayer today in any way, if you receive Jesus today or if you rededicated your life today or something has changed in your life or you've got other questions, I want you to go next door, out these double doors to our prayer room and meet with Brother Stan and Sister Judy and they'll give you further instructions and also pray for you. If you made those decisions out there live today, I want you to message me there on Facebook. Let me know the decisions that you made for Jesus Christ. I would love to share those uh, comments Wednesday night. And I'll see all of you uh, again Wednesday night live on Facebook uh, at 7 p.m. on Solid Rock Facebook, Solid Rock Church, Haleville, Alabama. Now raise your hands and receive your blessing today. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord God lift up His countenance upon you. Give you His eternal peace that surpasses all understanding. Let Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, God Himself, rule and reign in your heart and in your lives, this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name, I bless you. You are released. God bless you all today and your families.